Hey folks, okay. Now we want to get into something that's a little bit on the interesting side. We've talked about having let blocks with local variables, and we've talked about having lambda functions that allow us to kind of construct and return an anonymous function. Now what we're going to do is look, look at having a let block whose return value is a lambda function, and we'll see what we can do with that. And the Lisp implementation of lists as a linked list, as stuff that's dynamically allocated off on the heap, has big implications for how all of this is going to work. So, let's say we've got a let block whose return value is a lambda function. Then, if we call the let block, if we run the let block, right, if we run this let function, and it gives us back a lambda function that we store in a variable someplace, then we can repeatedly access that lambda function to go off and access or alter the variables in that let block. So those variables are, exist someplace off in memory, and this lambda function is saying, oh, okay, well, you know, every time you call me, I can go off and get access to those because I had access to them from within the let block. So we can create this kind of stored state someplace with a lambda function as access into that stored state. So the, uh, the variables for that let block, they will continue to exist somewhere off in memory as long as that lambda function still exists and still has access to them. So you are kind of creating this set of hidden variables someplace with a lambda function to get at them. So just as an example, here we've got a variable f, and we're going to run this let, well, I don't know, run the let function, right? Run this let block. It's going to have a local variable x that we're going to initialize to 1. And the body of the let block simply creates and returns this lambda function. And what the lambda function does is looks up the, or changes the current variable value, so it changes, adds 1 to x, and then prints out x. So that's all it does. And you run this lambda function, it just adds 1 to x. So we've done our def var on f. So f is now set to this function that's been returned, right? The return value from the let, which is that lambda block. So what we're going to do is repeatedly call that lambda function through f. Right? So this is where our higher order function comes in. We, we run fun call on f. And that runs that lambda function which in turn accesses that variable wherever it is off in memory. So it adds 1 to that variable x and prints it out. So now x is 2. I run it again. x is 3. And so there's this stored state someplace that we're getting at through this lambda function that we've stored in f. And again, the idea is that lists in Lisp are really linked lists, right? Linked lists of the value of an element and a pointer to the rest of it. So these things are automatically dynamically allocated off in the heap someplace. Every time you create a list, Lisp goes off and creates space in the heap for it. And really when you're using when you're storing the you know the list so to speak in a variable, you're storing a reference, a pointer to that space off in memory. Now Lisp takes care of the garbage collection on this automatically, right? It creates the, the list out there in the heap, and eventually it deallocates the list out in the heap. But it won't deallocate the list as long as there's still something pointing to it. So in this case, we've got that lambda function that's got a reference to the, the variables in that list someplace. So as long as that lambda function exists, that list will still exist wherever it is in memory. So you've got this hidden memory space that the lambda function is the only thing accessing that, right? That, that particular call for that particular lambda function is the only one that has access to that space. So again, as long as the lambda function exists, that space is maintained. So now let's see if we can do something a little bit more interesting with this. So if we take that lambda function and add parameters to it that let the user specify this time when I run the lambda function, I want you to do blah with that stored data. I want you to update it. I want you to uh, print it. I want you to you know compute something about it. So maybe we add 
a command parameter to the Lambda function specifying what it is we want to do, and then a bunch of other parameters, you know, specifying values to use when you run that command on that data. So we can repeatedly have the function do different things to the data over time. You know, in the, the increment example, we could have some that added one to it, some that subtracted one, some that printed, you know, whatever. Anything that we want to do to that data. So here we'll try that again. Let's have, again, we'll, we'll store the result of our let block, store the lambda function that gets created in a variable f. And this time our let block is going to have just one local variable r, and this time we're going to use that as the radius for a circle. So what our lambda is going to do now is say, okay, you can give me a command to either change the radius that's stored or to print it. So now we're taking a command and maybe an extra value. If you just want me to print it, you don't have to give me any extra information. But if you want to change the radius, then you have to tell me that you want to change the radius and you have to tell me what the new radius is. So we'll have this optional second argument for the lambda function. And what we'll do in the body of the Lambda function now is to say, okay, well, let's see what the command is. And if the command is set, then we'll change the value of R. We should probably throw in error checking as well. But you know, if the command is set, we'll change the value of R. And if it's anything else, we'll assume you just want to print R. Now, you could have you know as many of these things as, want, as you want, as many different con, uh, commands as you want, and just say, okay, well, if the command is this, do this. If the command is that, do that. If the command is this, do this. And then maybe your, your default case could be, hey, wait a minute, that's an invalid command. I don't recognize what that is. But again, in terms of playing with this, so now if we run fun call on f and say, well, use set, the symbol set as our first command, so it goes off to command and the lambda function compares what you gave it, the symbol set, to the symbol set, and it goes, hey, wait, those are the same thing. This is what I'm supposed to do. Or maybe I send the, the symbol print and it goes off and says, oh, well, that's not a set. I better do the other thing. And it prints the current value of R. Right? So we can go through and start creating these let blocks for the stored data and lambda functions to access them. Now, let's take this one step further. So we looked at closures, where we have a function that builds a function and returns it. So this time, what if we say our builder function has this let block in it and returns, creates and returns the lambda function? So now we're going to create a function, let's call it builder, and we give it a bunch of parameters that specify how to create anything special we want to customize this, uh, the particular one that we're creating. You know, think of this kind of like a constructor function if you like in uh, in an OO sense where you're saying, okay, well, here's the initial values to use when you construct a whatever it is. And again, in our builder function, we would have the let block and the lambda function that this thing is going to return. So now when I want to use this, you know, again, I'm going to store the, the lambda function that comes back in a variable. And I run my builder function and I pass it whatever data I want it to use to construct this particular version of the circle or the whatever it happens to be, the counter. So now, again, this is acting a lot like a constructor function, and it's returning a lambda function that we can use, right? We can call that lambda function over and over and over again, giving it different commands to do different things. So I'm going to think of this in kind of an OO sense, where this is acting kind of like a constructor, and what it's returning is a dispatch function, where we, send, we give commands to the dispatch function, and it dispatches the orders on what to do to that hidden data that we've created, right? to the internal state of this thing. Now, of course, all of this is about as far as you can get from pure uh, functional programming, because we're relying on all sorts of hidden state information here, and all sorts of side effects. So again, our function is acting like a constructor. You know, Maybe I say, you know, create one of these things where um, with a real number and allow real numbers, or create one of these things with an integer and don't allow real numbers. And again, each of these things, right, each call has its own let block, right? Each time you call a function, it gets its own local variable space. So this first call to builder has its let, let block local variable space. 
and that's distinct from this one. When it gets called, it gets its own local variable space, so its let block is someplace else in memory. So these two things actually have separate space. When I run the f dispatch, right, the f lambda, it's going to access the space that we set aside for the 23.5, and when we access through g, it's going to access the space that was someplace else that we initialized with the 5. Right, so they're each working on their own local space. And again, this has got a very OOE feel to it. So let's uh, try this with an example with circles. So let's say for our circle data type, we're going to say, well, a circle's got the, uh, we'll just think in sort of 2D sense here, our circles will have X and Y coordinates for the center, and they'll have a radius. And I want to be able to do things like, you know, uh, go off and compute the area for me now, uh, go off and print the information about the circle, uh, maybe set a new radius, maybe set new XY coordinates to move the circle someplace else. So this will be what we what we want to try with. So what I want to be able to do is called a build circle function, give it the original XY coordinates and the initial radius and have it go off and create the circle, right? And store that space, store that data in wherever the, the space is allocated off in the heap, and then it will return this lambda function that allows me to access the information about that circle. So I'm going to create one where the circle is uh, has you know x y coordinates five three and a radius of twenty four, and another one that's uh, at the origin with a radius of one. And I do something like call or, or pass a, a print command to the dispatcher for the first circle, and it goes off and says, oh yeah, okay, so that's at you know five three and it's got radius twenty four. So this build circle constructor, if you like, is the one that's interesting for us. Now, what I'm going to say is our build circle expects you know, three arguments, the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the radius. But maybe we make those optional so that we have, you know, by default, we'll just use the origin and radius one. But if they want to give us arguments, we'll use those. So we'll create three optional arguments, one for the x coordinate, one for the y coordinate, one for the radius. And then I'm going to have my three local variables in my let block for x and for y and for r. Now, I'm not going to initialize those with whatever they passed just by default because they might have passed garbage, and I don't want to put garbage in my local variables. So I'm going to set them to, to the origin initially, and then I'm going to check and see if the arguments they passed were actually valid. So if they gave me a real number for, the initial, for, the, for x, I'll set it. If they gave me a real number for y, I'll set it. If they gave me a real number for the radius and it wasn't negative, then I'll set it. All right, so I'll do a little bit of, of checking on the parameters before I stick them in here. So the, uh, the default values up there are just in case they don't pass anything. And then the initialization values are to start off with something safe in case they passed garbage. All right, so this has got our initial data set up somewhere off in memory. And now we want to create the lambda function and return the lambda function that allows them to pass commands to act on that local data. So again, my lambda function, I'm going to say, well, let's specify that they've got to give me the command, what they want to do. And then some of the commands might require additional data. So I'm going to make an optional argument that I'm going to set to nil by default. And again, some of the commands will use it, some of the commands won't. So for the different commands that they provide, let's say we'll support a print command, an area command, and a radius command. So the print command just prints the current information about the circle. So it prints the x and y coordinates and the radius. The area goes off and computes the current area of the circle. So just, you know, pi r squared. And the radius command allows them to set a new radius. Maybe we'll throw in one more to set new xy coordinates. So if the command is radius, then we'll check and make sure that the argument that they provided, and again, if they didn't provide an argument, it's just using that default nil. If the argument they provided was a real number and it was bigger than zero, that should probably be a greater than or equal to, eh, do we want zero radius circles? Anyway, um, you know, check that the, it's actually a valid number for our radius. And if it is, then we set it. And if not, then we give them an error message. And again, maybe we throw in another one for 
if the command is coordinates, then we'll set the XY coordinates, kind of move the circle around on the, the 2D plane. And we'll have a default at the bottom for if they pass anything else, then you gave me a bad command and we'll just tell them whatever command that it was they gave us. So if they gave us coordinates, then again, we have to make sure that this is valid. So what I'm gonna say if they gave me coordinates is it has to be a list of the X value and the Y value. So we'll make sure that the argument is a list and that it's got exactly two elements and that the first one is a real and that the second one is a real. And if all of that is true, so if all of that passes, then we'll set the value of x and we'll set the so set the value of x from the first thing in that list and set the value of y from the second thing in the list. Huh. Except if this is an if statement, then that really should be in a block, not in a uh, um, I can't have two separate values in here. So there should actually be block around that or something along those lines. But again, now we've got this uh, lambda function that gets created. And I can say something like, you know, def var c uh, call my build or my build circle and pass it whatever values I want and start issuing these commands. Does that kind of match the circle commands we gave earlier? Yeah, yeah. So we were going off and calling our, our, you know, creating our build circle, specifying some initial values, and then issuing commands like, you know, C1 print, or we could say something like C1 area, and that would return the area, current area of the circle, or say C1 set, um, or uh, radi C1 radius 27 to set a new radius, or C1 uh, coordinate and then specify a list of, you know, 10, 20 or something like that to set the new XY coordinates. So now we very much have a, a kind of an OO feel to this where we've gone off, run this thing as kind of a constructor to give us back a dispatch function that we can use to access the stored data. So what we're going to do next time is throw one more layer into this, right? Right now, we've got our let over lambda. It would be really handy, you know, as these things, as our data structures get more complex, it would be really handy if we could have some local methods in here so that, you know, in addition to having the local variables, I could have a bunch of local functions that I could say, okay, well, you know, run this function to actually figure out what it is I want to do now. So that's where we'll go next is introducing let over labels over lambda and play with that for a while.